over the past millennium, there has been quite some yoga teachers that have been spreading the word, that have brought the philosophy, the beautiful philosophy of yoga and all its practices and teachings to the West. Now, some of them, all of us know, like Krishnamacharya, because Iyengar, Patavi Joyce. But there are some of them that actually, even before that time, before this wave in the 60s and the 70s, that have been practicing yoga and have been trying to spread the teachings in their ways. And there are some of them that I would like you, that I would like to share with you. First of them that I would like to mention is David Thoreau. He was an American novelist, poet, and he was known for his anti-establishment, for doing things different from the rest, from encouraging others to to find their essence, to do, to live according to their values. Now he was a good friend of Emerson, and Emerson had a big library, uh, many books, and there he found one scripture that was talking about Hindu philosophy and thought, and he was so captured by what it was saying that he devoted himself totally to living consciously and with awareness. And you can also see this back in his works. He has this famous book of essays, Walden, which is written during the time when he lived in this little village close to a lake. And this time he is living very, very simple life. And he's really trying to integrate this ease and being aware of every and each moment of living in, in nature. He's really trying to integrate his teachings, living simple, living in nature, living with the elements. So he was one of the, the first ones. He lived, he was born right before the turn of the 19th and 20th century. And actually in this time there was quite some other people. So another famous one is Yogi Ramacharka. And the first time I stumbled upon his teaching, upon, upon his writing, I thought that he was born in India and he moved to the West to spread his word. But actually there's a whole different story behind this Yogi. He is an American, his name is William Walker Atkinson, and he used to write under many pseudonyms. Now he was born in Maryland in the States in simple family and he helped his father in his business from the age of 15 and then continued on to study and actually had a quite successful life and worked as an attorney. Now he became very successful professionally but this was followed up by mental, uh, emotional, and in the end also financial crisis, just before 18, around the 1890s. And at this time he started to gain more and more interest in Eastern mysticism and occultism, as he would call it. And through this path, especially he was writing a lot about prana and healing yourself. And he used this healing, this teaching to heal himself. And he was so taken by this broad world and science and how it could help him that he decided to share this with others. And he found this new wave, a new uh, society, which he would call New Thought, as in New Age, but then he called it New Thought. And he had a magazine, New Thought magazine, and he would write for this magazine, which was quite popular then at that time, actually. Now, he used many pseudonyms, and one of them was Yogi Ramacharka. First, he said that Yogi Ramacharka was an Indian man that was his co-author, but it's now known that it was actually he himself that would write under this name. He's an interesting figure, interesting teaching. I encourage you all to, 
to find some of his text on the internet, which is freely available, and to familiarize. And because he's from the West, but he's sharing this teaching and But from a Western viewpoint, it's it's very understandable. Now, another person that I would like to mention and share with you is Indra Devi, and she's more well known than Thoreau or Yogi Ramacharka. But I'm especially taken with her because it's a woman, first of all. And she was the first woman to uh, receive teaching from Krishnamacharya and that had spread this teaching with others in the West. Unfortunately, she passed away because otherwise for sure I would have gone to visit her and study with her. But unfortunately, I didn't have this chance. But anyway, I would like to share with you what I know from her. So Indra Devi, she was born in Riga and she grew up with her mother only. And in 1917, she moved from Riga to Berlin because of the political situation at that time. And in Berlin, she studied theater and started acting. At some point in her life, early in her life, in her 20s, she moved to India. Or actually she went to visit and she was so taken with the country with the, the spirit of the country that she wanted to go back she was actually engaged at that time with someone but she came back and she told him I'm sorry I cannot marry I have to go to India so she moved to India now first of all she involved herself in the acting world she became a, a Bollywood actress and famous and popular she became wealthy and well known. And at some point, and, and, and she got engaged and married. At some point, she got sick. And she had a relative, or she had a friend in Mysore, the Maharaj of Mysore, which was a good friend of her. And he had, again, good connections with Krishna Macharya, the famous yoga teacher. First, he didn't accept to heal her because she was a woman, but she insisted, the Maharaj insisted, and he taught her some asana pranaya to heal her. And she got healthy quickly. And in this time, she got the opportunity to, to show her interest in yoga, or actually the time there awaken her interest in yoga. And, and Krishna Ramacharya was taken by her interest and by her dedication. So he decided to teach her. So she stayed on with him for a year. And after her husband had an appointment or got appointed another job in China, he thought this is a great opportunity to, for someone to share his teaching or actually yoga with other populations, with other cultures. So he urged her to start teaching. So this is what she did. She moved to China with her husband and she taught yoga there to many Americans and, and Russians because she was, her husband was wealthy, they both were wealthy. She could share with many high influential people. Now, they stayed there for about 10 years. Her husband unfortunately passed away and then she decided to move to America where she lived a long time in Los Angeles and there she shared yoga again many celebrities that started to gain interest until her last day she kept on teaching yoga and also what she did was she would teach freely at orphanages the last 20-30 years of her life she spent in South America and Argentina mainly